Barely a month after the attack, the UN mission released a report of the United Nations mission to investigate allegations of the use of chemical weapons in the Syrian Arab Republic on the alleged use of chemical weapons in the Gota area of Damascus on 21 August 2013. Appendix 5, Impact Site Number 4 says, The said engine, representing no form of lateral bending, pointed precisely in a bearing of 285 degrees that, again, represent a reverse azimuth to the trajectory followed by the rocket during its flight. It can be thus concluded that the original azimuth of the rocket trajectory had an azimuth of 105 degrees in an east-southeast trajectory. Within days, Human Rights Watch published an infographic highlighting the significance of this azimuth, and the New York Times wrote, One annex to the report also identified azimuths, or angular measurements, from where rockets had struck back to their points of origin. When plotted and marked independently on maps by analysts from Human Rights Watch and by the New York Times, the United Nations data from two widely scattered impact sites pointed directly to a Syrian military complex. In November 2013, an Al Jazeera documentary had its own forensic scientists on the scene who measured an entirely different angle. Instead of naming the contradiction, they used the UN azimuth to now refer to two different Syrian army installations on Mount Kassoun. As recently as 2021, Elliot Higgins was praised for confirming that rocket trajectory. Higgins's other major finding was confirming the trajectory of the rockets. Indeed, the rocket trajectories from eastern and western Gouda intersect over the Republican Guard base on Mount Kassoun. Higgins had replicated the UN mission's most significant finding without leaving his room. Let's watch the video of the UN mission again. In this video frame, the camera is directly behind the rocket engine and pointing in the same direction. Unmistakably, the rocket engine points to the corner of the facade in shadow, while the facade in the background is in sunlight. Based on this feature, the house can be identified perfectly which means the angle from the point of impact to the corner of the house can be determined without a doubt. This angle corresponds to the trajectory of the rocket. We exported a satellite image of the area in question and built a scaled 3D model of the buildings and structures on it. The yellow cuboid in the background represents the house with the sunny facade. With this model, we can compare the appearance of the angle of the rocket from all directions in the video. Apparently, we have a pretty good match. However, according to our measurement, this rocket engine does not point in the direction of 105 degrees, but has an azimuth of 134 degrees to 136 degrees. This is a huge difference of 30 degrees compared to the UN report, which can hardly be explained by a common measurement error. However, if the azimuth in the UN report were correct, the rocket engine would have to point to the pink house. So, let's do the counter test with the rocket engine at an angle of 105 degrees. In fact, the difference is so great that confusion is impossible. In other words, the azimuth pointing to the Republican Guard based on Mount Kassoun, which was used by Human Rights Watch, New York Times, and subsequently the international press to assign blame for the attack, and which was allegedly confirmed by Bellingcat founder Elliot Higgins, is obviously wrong by 30 degrees. After the UN report appeared, several weapons experts looked into the range of these unusual rockets. The calculations showed an average range of 2 kilometers. But perhaps more importantly, a difference of 30 kilograms of charge hardly changes the range. This means that even a half-full missile will fly very little further. I mean, we, we have seen, probably like you have seen others, um, performing whatever studies on these rockets. Um, and we have consulted uh, with, with the experts. And if you simulate the, the flight path, it seemed not to, to meet, uh, you know, uh, in, in, uh, uh, as the, we, we may be indicated from the report, or you may draw the conclusion from the report, 
two kilometers could, could be a fair guess, uh, I would assume. But it, it all depends. You, you have to sort of set some parameters which we do, do not know. We do not know to the extent they were filled or what they were filled with. We don't know their weight or whatever. Um, but two kilometers could be a fair guess. This video provides independent confirmation of this range. We measure the time from the flash of the explosion until the moment the sound of the explosion reaches the camera. From the duration the sound travels and using the speed of sound, we can calculate the distance. We get pretty much two kilometers. While this video shows the high explosives type of this rocket, then the 50 to 60 liter canister filled with TNT could be 30 kilograms heavier than the same canister filled with sarin, there is no reason to assume a much longer range of the Gota attack. Let's take a look at what Al Jazeera's forensic scientists found out. They examined an impact site next to a swimming pool. There they determined an azimuth for the rocket trajectory of 127 degrees. Let's put together the findings so far. We have the impact site of the rocket that was investigated by the UN mission. We have determined an angle of about 136 degrees and a range of about 2 kilometers. To account for the inaccuracy of the determined angle and for aerodynamic effects during the flight, we draw a triangle which allows a deviation of 3 degrees. We also have the impact location next to the pool and a determined azimuth of about 127 degrees. Let's also give this compass measurement a possible error of 3 degrees. The first surprising but unexpected finding is that both trajectories intersect at a distance of 2 kilometers. This is a first good confirmation of the correctness of these estimates. However, what seems to be even more important for confirmation is that we know that at this exact location, a rocket launcher of the appropriate type was standing and firing in the direction of the impact sites. This video is very dark. It was possibly taken with a phone camera. Only at the moment when the fire of the ignited rocket illuminates the area, enough details were visible that allowed us to positively identify the location, on the basis of seven relatively unique features. Question. How likely is it to find the previously unknown location of a rocket launcher exactly where two measured trajectories intersect at the distance of two kilometers from the two separate impact locations? The probability is so vanishingly small that we assume that no other location with all these characteristics will be found in acceptable agreement anywhere else in Syria. According to our measurements, the filmed rocket was launched at about an azimuth of 110 degrees. From this launch spot, there are six impacts listed by Human Rights Watch that roughly correspond to this direction. And unsurprisingly, we found that all other documented impact sites also point in the direction of this launch spot. Immediately after the launch video surfaced on the internet, they were lightly dismissed as fake and ignored. The main reason for this seems to be the inconvenient fact that this field was firmly in the hands of the opposition on August 21st. When the Syrian army approached this area three days later, they were attacked with an improvised explosive device containing sarin. More such IEDs were found in a storage room in Jobar, along with gas masks and entropine ampoules. There are also some medicines here. Some soldiers say these have been used to treat injuries caused by chemical weapons. The army doctor said that there were 36 cases of suspected chemical weapon attacks.
During the fighting around Ghouta, the Syrian army was accompanied by television crews. Among hours of footage, we managed to find this short clip taken near the launch site. It shows a tank shelling the White House next to that field. Satellite images, however, prove that this roof was still undamaged on August 24th. Why would tanks destroy this house after August 24th when this location was supposedly secure enough three days earlier to produce a fake video with extremely loud and extremely bright rockets in the middle of the night? And if the video was produced at a later date, why would the angles and range of the rocket impacts in Gouda point precisely to this field? Moreover, the producers of a fake video would have had to fire the same type of rocket into the same residences while the whole world looked on Gouda in horror and the US military was ready to intervene? The questions that arise from these findings are as follows. How and why was the UN mission able to measure a 30-degree wrong angle? How was Elliot Higgins able to confirm this wrong angle? And how had Al Jazeera managed, despite forensic experts on the ground and correct measurements, to find not just one, but two false locations, both military bases as alleged launch spots. 